Psalm 69. This is a short preamble to it. God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53, the descendant of King David from chapter 11 of Isaiah, was despised and shunned by men, but ends up making the many righteous and receiving as his portion the many and the multitude as his spoil. Psalm 69 reveals that like God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53, King David was shunned and despised before he became king after his anointment by Samuel. This is from uh, 1 Samuel 16, verse 11. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the boys you have? He replied, They are still the youngest. He is tending the flock. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send someone to bring him, for we will not sit down to eat until he gets here. So they sent and brought him. He was ruddy cheeked bright-eyed, and handsome. And the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. That would be God speaking to Samuel. Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord gripped David from that day on. Samuel then set out for Ramah. The Spirit of God gripped him. That is, the Spirit of God lit upon and entered him, and God was in his spirit. Now, parts of Psalm 69 are written with uh, religion in mind, which I've mentioned before. If something is not prophecy, or it appears to be prophecy but cannot occur in the real world, there's, there's always at least three, if not four, other purposes of God and have it written. I'll note them when I get to them. Psalm 69, verse 1. For the leader on Shashanim of David. Okay, Midrash form. I take parts of the verse and give commentary. Shashanim. And I had this in quotes. I'm not sure where I picked this up, but clearly it was from the internet, maybe Wikipedia. <clears throat> that means to the chief musician upon Shoshanim. And it is a musical direction to the leader of the temple choir and most probably indicates the melody either after or in the manner of which the psalms were to be sung. Verse 2. Deliver me, O God, for the waters have reached my neck. I am sinking into the slimy deep and find no foothold. I have come into the watery depths. The flood sweeps me away. Verse 4. I am weary with calling. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for God. Okay, now I just mentioned... Spirit of God gripped him from that day forward, and God is in his spirit. And uh, we know that from Ezekiel. And other places in the scripture, such as when God is telling the Israelites, my angel goes before you, do not offend him, do not disobey him, for I, Hashem, am in him. And I've explained how that works in other videos. More numerous than the hairs of my head are those who hate me without reason. Many are those who would destroy me, my treacherous enemies. Must I restore what I have not stolen? Okay, again, this is like the righteous servant of Isaiah 53. Shunned and despised, accounted, plagued, smitten, afflicted by God. Those who hate me without reason. David was God's anointed of Jesse to be king of the Israelites, but to others, he was David, the lowly shepherd who was said to be God's anointed king. 
I mean, that's the only answer to all the shunning and despising. They didn't believe him. They didn't believe Samuel. And there's more to that reason, and I'll get to it. Must I restore what I have not stolen? Must David deny the anointment that was freely given to him by God? God, you know my folly. My guilty deeds are not hidden from you. My guilty deeds, like God's righteous servant, David, is a sinner. And these are just more ways to connect the descendant of David in chapter 11 to Isaiah 53. Said to be the Jewish people as the patriarch Israel. Gathered as one. Plagued such that they would offer themselves for guilt to God. Still haven't had anybody tell me what day that was. Let those who look to you, O Lord, God of hosts, not be dis disappointed on my account. Let those who seek you, O God of Israel, not be shamed because of me. It is for your sake that I have been reviled, that shame covers my face. Shunned in this place, a kind of plague, smitten and afflicted by God in my particular case. I am a stranger. Oh, and there are those out there who know very well what I'm speaking of, rabbis in particular. I am a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my kin. In Psalm 110, verse 7, David says, Indeed, I was born with iniquity. With sin, my mother conceived me. In the days of David, men had many wives, many concubines, as is well known with his son Solomon. The iniquity would have come from his father Jesse, fathering a child with a woman outside of the tribes. Rashi gives another example, but you, you start getting into original sin and Christian beliefs. Uh, this is the only, the only answer that makes any sense. David's brothers were present at his anointment and passed over for the one born in iniquity. They witnessed the anointment, but could only hear the words of Samuel. And this is an issue that I know comes up in the town, and I don't have it written here, and I don't know why that is. But I do know they made up the name of the mother of David and said she was Jewish or an Israelite. They could not hear God tell Samuel, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. David became a stranger and an alien to his brothers and kin as one born in iniquity and as one said to be the anointed of God. If his brothers and kin believed he was the anointed of God to be king, they would have embraced him. It's just that they just didn't believe him. I mean, it's not unlike me telling people I'm the righteous servant of God. The Spirit of God is lit upon me and God is in his spirit. With all this knowledge I have, with God having taught me all the materials of these two books, which together go over 400 pages, and I put it into about 50 videos thus far, and we're just getting going. He's going to have me giving commentary on just about anything and everything in the Hebrew Bible. This is the third one we're working on today. I've got two downloading. It's a slow day. Verse 10. My zeal for your house has been my undoing. The reproaches of those who revile you have fallen upon me. When I wept and fasted, I was reviled for it. Okay, he says, when he wept and fasted, he was reviled. When David cried and went without food in his shame, and his brothers and enemies assailed him with scornful and abusive language. I made sackcloth my garment. I became a byword among them. Those who sit in the gate talk about me. I am the taunt of drunkards. And you really don't think about that. As you just don't think of him in that context or having that kind of a moment in his life or a time in his life. 
But he went through just as the righteous servant does, just as Ezekiel did. They laughed at Ezekiel. They never believed him in exile. But they, I'm sure they love to hear his stories of, of visions. As for me, may my prayer come to you, O Lord, again. The Lord is with me. This is written for the people of antiquity, for religious purposes, for people who are going through a bad time and they want God to hear them and they're praying. So this has to be put in there. It doesn't mean that uh, David's not a man in divine beings. He clearly is. You know, he's... <laughs> O oh God, in your abundant faithfulness, answer me with your deliverance. Rescue me from the mire. Let me not sink. Let me be rescued from my enemies and from the watery depths. And in such poetry and prose of God in the Psalms he had written. Let the flood waters not sweep me away. Let the deep not swallow me. Let the mouth of the pit not close over me. So, David is a lowly shepherd who was born in sin and is admittedly a sinner. God has anointed David to be king of all Israel, according to Samuel, and David feels as though he is living in a pit of shame and despair. Verse 17, Answer me, O Lord, according to your great steadfastness, in accordance with your abundance mercy, Turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Answer me quickly. Come near to me and redeem me. Free me from my enemies. Oh, uh, you know my reproach, my shame, my disgrace. You are aware of all of my foes. You are aware of all my foes. God has absolute knowledge. That's, that's, what, that's how God explains himself to me. He says, I am absolute knowledge and absolute power and the consciousness of the universe. There's, there's a definition you don't hear too often. God has absolute knowledge of all things and all people he chooses to follow closely. That would include all naysayers and haters and enemies of his anointed one, David, and would also include his righteous servant who makes them many righteous in the day of the Lord, who is shunned and despised and accounted plague, smitten, afflicted of God. Reproach breaks my heart. I am in despair. I hope for consolation, but there is none. For comforters, but find none. But find none. No one believes David is the anointed of God to be king of Israel. My own children don't believe I'm the anointed of God, the righteous servant, the descendant of King David. No one does, best I know. They give me gall for food, vinegar to quench my thirst. May their table be a trap for them, a snare for their allies. Okay, may their table be a trap for them, a snare for their allies. <clears throat> may the haters and naysayers and enemies and those who shun David and shame him and all those who believe in their talk and words and opinions about David and about God's righteous servant in the day of the Lord which is the table they have set for themselves against God's anointed one, be their undoing before God. And, and, when Keith McCarty is recognized as the righteous servant of God, which will happen. And why is that? That was God speaking. And why is that? It's because I received the many and the multitude. The many as my portion, the multitude as my spoil, and an abode to be honored. So it's all going to happen. I make the many righteous and a multitude. And that, that from Psalm 2, stretches across the world because the Jewish people are from throughout the world. 
May their eyes grow dim so that they cannot see. May their loins collapse continually. And this really, it kind of surprised me because this is David talking. He's telling the Lord, you just basically curse them. <laughs> May their eyes grow dim. May their loins collapse continually. I'm not even quite sure what that means, but it doesn't sound good. Not for a man, anyway. Pour out your wrath on them. May your blazing anger overtake them. May their encampments be desolate. May their tents stand empty. Uh, may they be infertile. For they persecute those you have struck. They talk about the pain of those you have felt. Okay, so they, in that context, the haters and naysayers and enemies and those who shun David and shame him and all those who believe in their talk and words and opinions about David persecute him for being the anointed of God. Most, if not all, do not believe God spoke to Samuel in his anointment. David feels as though God's anointment has been a physical blow to his life and his feelings. Those, in the second part of that verse, would include others that had been anointed or selected by God as his prophets, whose words are rarely believed and heeded as the words of God, and go through the same ordeal as David. You know, it, it, I, now I can understand, somebody like Ezekiel, what was his backup? What was his proof of who he was? Moses even said to God, who am I? That the Israelites in Egypt, these slaves are going to listen to me, that their God that their God has sent me. That's the way he puts it. And God gave him a few things. He said, well, tell them my name. Uh, and then three uh, miracles, uh, the staff that turns into a snake, uh, leprosy on his hand and puts it back in his shirt, and leprosy's gone, and then drop in uh, a drop of the Nile uh, onto sand or back in the water, and it turns to blood. All of which could be tricks. But he convinced 600,000 uh, Israelites to leave with him in the Exodus and all their families. Add that to their guilt. Let them have no share of your benefits. May they be erased from the book of life and not be inscribed with the righteous. Be erased from the book of life and not be inscribed with the righteous. Okay, this is those that are in right standing with God. It does not include... Oh, okay, we'll get to it. A heavenly book in which the names of the righteous are inscribed. This is the book of life. The erasure of a sinner's name from such a register is equivalent to death. According to the Talmud, it is opened on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah itself is also known as the Day of Judgment, on which God opens the books of life and death, which are then sealed on Yom Kippur. The two days of Rosh Hashanah usher in the ten days of repentance, also known as the Days of Awe, which culminate in the first major fast. Oh, culminate in the major fast day of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. The scroll of remembrance in Malachi chapter 3 verse 16 is not the book of life. God says in this vein have those who revered the Lord been talking to one another. The Lord has heard and noted it and the scroll of remembrance has been written at his behest concerning those who revered the Lord and esteemed his name. And on the day that I am preparing said the Lord of hosts they shall be my treasured possession. That's the day of the Lord. That's when that's prepared. That's today. How do we know? Jeremiah 31. When the land blooms again, when Jerusalem's rebuilt, I make a new covenant with you of sin forgiveness. It's an amendment, by the way. That's what makes it new. A sin forgiveness, which will write Torah on your hearts. You say, okay, that is happening right now. Where's that covenant? Oh, I know. Malachi 3. There's the angel of the covenant that you desire coming with, before, but with God and his messenger Elijah, a man with infinite knowledge of heaven, if you want to test him.
and you shall come to see the difference between the righteous and the wicked? Doesn't really sound like Messianic air to me, this last page of the prophets. Doesn't really sound like Messianic air. You're going to know the difference between the righteous and the wicked. The good are going to go into the soil of remembrance. I thought everybody was out flaw, no sin. That's, that's what it says. When you read articles on the Messianic air, everybody's perfected. The world's perfected. Nation loves nation. Neighbor loves neighbor. Huh. God says, well, in my day, I don't know, but the day these rabbis have made up and I've dismissed, and guess what? They don't go into the school of remembrance. That's what the dismissal is. And the only way out of it is repentance. And that repentance is repent of your false teaching. Repent of your messianic error. Read the two books God had me type at his dictation. It's the gods of words. It's scripture. It's not canonized, but it's scripture. If any rabbi on the face of this earth, God says they never listen to me. And this time they don't listen to me, I'm going to punish every single one of them. Now that's God. That's the God of Israel. This ain't Jesus we're talking about was wanting a personal relationship with you or frankly anybody else. Our, our relationship's rather tenuous sometimes. I'll add that to it. But I am in the fire of the fire. I'm told he can be nicer than he is. I the Holy Spirit. Okay, for lo, that day is at hand, burning like an oven. Verse 30. But I... Excuse me, but I am lowly and in pain. <laughs> it's kind of a lead in for what I just said. I've been lowly and in pain for 13 years now. Your help, O oh God, keeps me safe. I will extol God's name with song and exalt him with praise. That will please the Lord more than oxen, than bulls with horns and hoofs. Worship, not sacrifices. Verse 33, the lowly will see and rejoice. You who are mindful of God, take heart. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his captives. Heaven and earth shall extol him, the seas and all that moves in them. For God will deliver Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. Well, that's part of the time to come of the day of the Lord. Restoring the cities. Rebuilding Jerusalem. A, 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 a new planting. You know, he's got that in his covenant of friendship. And, of course, it's occurring. The Jews were planted, and they had done a miraculous job. It's a beautiful country. Um... It's just an incredible people and an incredible country. They shall live there and inherit it. The offspring of his servants shall possess it. Those who cherish his name shall dwell there. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you're enjoying this. I sure am. <laughs>